Ooh. Oh my gosh, this is so much better than how I was using it in the past. Look at the stopping force. Oh yeah. Some rockfish are going to fall and hopefully it'll come. Alright guys, so uh, as you can see, here's my new old S533-5.5, love this reel. The gear that I have for this uh, endeavor is going to be some paper towels. We have kind of a flat head and a regular head screwdriver. We have our Carbon Tex by Smooth the Drag. Knife, just in case we need to use one. Cal's Drag Grease, and then I might, if I have a uh, bearing exposed, use some precision oil and some rod cleaner at the end, just to give it a little protection for tomorrow. And this is the tool that comes with the reel because we're gonna have to take off this guy right here. All right, but first we should take the uh, reel off the rod, so let's do that. All right, all right, all right. The one thing that uh, I like to do so I don't get in trouble by the wife is to lay down a towel. And I also grabbed some, some gloves just to keep my hands clean. But uh, you don't need to use gloves if you don't want to. Here we go. Lay down a towel. That looks nice. Okie dokie. Let's put on our gloves. Whew, feel like I'm going in for an exam. All right, so the first thing, let's uh, make this easier on ourselves to remove this from our rod. So you can take this tool, or whatever flathead screwdriver you have, and loosen this up. I would recommend not using anything that's powered. You don't want to strip one of these things and then you ruin it. Plus it's probably not on there that strong, so take this thing off by hand. Right, freedom. Put that off to the side. Put the tool off to the side. Now, undo this guy. Ooh, it's on there snug. There we go. Cool. Comes off just like that. Now we have our reel free as a bird. And we can put our rod off to the side. Okie dokie. Here we go. Now the next step is to take off this nut right here. You're gonna use this tool that comes with it. Um, if you don't have that tool, I'm sure you can buy one online or if you have to figure out which wrench you can use. There's this little uh, white plastic piece that kind of gets in the way, uh, but it's okay. I think you can just pop that out with a screwdriver. It's helpful to have little screwdrivers in a toolbox bag that you can kind of just uh, use to pull things out if needed. So you can just pull it out like that. Doesn't take too much effort. So I'll lay that out there. I believe this thing just comes right off your handle. It pops right off. Don't need to force anything. You also can pull off the next washer. And I believe I was able to get it off this. There's an, a ring, there's an E-ring. There's an E-ring right there that prevents this from coming off. But if you wiggle it right, you can still pull it off. So it's, you know, some would say just, you know, pull that thing off, pull the E-ring off first. But then it's kind of helpful to kind of lay out your parts in a orientation where you can kind of go back and, and put them on. Now we have this star drag that we can just unscrew off. Boom, right there. Okay, now let's see. Greasy, that's nice. The next step, I believe now, is to pull off this cap. And that's what we're gonna have to do by pulling off 
these guys the side plate first. So let's do that. Way too small of a screwdriver for this, but um, it is what it is. I don't have these guys super, super tight, so it's not that big of a deal. They're not all the same screw, so you want to make sure that you uh, remember the orientation. Some of them are these kinds of uh, smooth on the outside with threads on the inside, and then you have another, you have a long one that's like a regular screw that goes at the top. Highly recommend you take pictures or have um, Dennis at Second Chance Tackle. He has like a monster repository of almost every reel to deconstruct. So go visit him. I had him once on my podcast, super great guy. He's the one who kind of taught me and inspired me to fix up my own gear. You know, instead of taking it to the shop, save a little bit of money and also just, it's kind of therapeutic. Once you get all those screws off, this thing comes off. Kind of put them together. I like to just put the screws right back in their holes so that it's easier for me to remember. Once you have that off, it just opens up. Sorry if I'm doing this from memory. It still looks pretty clean from when I fixed up everything last year. Things look good, so I'm not gonna really touch that housing. Here's the inside, what it looks like. Um, and our drags are in this housing area. To gain access to that, we're gonna have to pop off this guy. So once you have those screws, ooh, a bunch of stuff just popped out. Okay, so uh, once you have those screws off, this back housing comes out, just like that. So um, we're gonna move that to the side, keep those screws together. And this is what I liked about the Newell reel, is this whole assembly is just so beautifully designed and in one piece. This right here sits on this guy. We'll keep that here. It's always helpful to have your schematics um, if you want to look. I've, I've, I've deconstructed this whole thing like all the way but uh, it looks so pretty. Grease, not, no water's gotten into it. But this is where our plan of attack is. This is where we're going to replace these washers. For the drags, we're going to lift up this first washer, right here. See the orientation? The uh, indent was facing down, so we're gonna keep it that way. Then you have this metal washer here. Keep that there. And now we're getting into the felt washers. And here's how you can see the felt. It's just a piece of felt that is pretty old, compressed, not gonna give a lot of friction. So that went there. Sometimes it can be a little bit challenging. You can also just pop this guy off, so maybe we'll do that. We'll pop this guy off here. Then that kind of gives us access to the inner ring, so we can keep popping things off. So that one is the eared washer. Look at these things there. Stuck together! Ooh, no wonder. That thing wasn't doing much, so we got that. Ooh, these are glued on. Another metal. So there is our stack. Everything else looks clean though. I'm pretty impressed. So let's take out this guy and hopefully it's the uh, right everything. So, so this says on the back, New generation carbon fiber, perfect combination 
Raveling, st unraveling stopping power, silky smoothness, outstanding consistency, carbon text drags, maybe use dry or lightly greased with uh, Cal's Universal. So cool. So let's see what's in this packet. Oh, it comes in another packet. All right, that off to the side. So they have theirs, we have ours, but let's just keep it, Keep. let's just match up the lineup. Okie dokie, let's see. Ooh, look at that carbon fiber goodness. So we have, you can see that shine, carbon fiber right there. So let's match it up. We got one, we got two, we got three, we got an extra. Ooh, where does the extra go? That's interesting. I'm not sure where the extra went. Okie dokie. Well, if I had to put it somewhere, maybe we'll put it here. I'm guessing, I'm not sure. Well, if uh, I'm doing this wrong, let me know. Because <laughs> I wasn't expecting there to be an extra. As you can see that there's an extra one here. So, um, cool, let's put this stack back together. So instead of that one, we're going to put this one in here. But before we do that, I like to use a little uh, cow's grease. So you can just take a little bit at the end of your tip and kind of just uh, coat it on both sides. And you can use your glove and kind of rub it in a little bit. I'm not gonna use a ton here, just a tad. Um, I'm gonna just do that really quickly to all of them. And then I don't worry, worry that I'm gonna get too, too much on, because I like to use a, a paper towel and kind of wipe off any excess a little bit. And then the uh, mysterious one. I'm gonna have to look up Maybe I should go call Dennis. Dennis, what do I do about this extra, extra washer? Cool, so I'll take a uh, piece of paper towel, rub it in between, just to get some of the extra off. Put that off to the side. Can close up my grease. One of these tubes will last you for a long time. Now let's do our stack. So for the stack, I put it down in here. Metal, carbon, eared, carbon. Eared. Now, here's the question. Do we put this down, or is this an optional if we don't want as much stopping force drag? Because I mean, we can put it here, per se, and then put this guy on top. I mean, that could be something. It's like a free floater. I don't know. Here's the question. I don't know. Yeah, it looks good, man. Hey, dude. Uh, I'm putting together a little video right now on uh, fixing up my drag system on my Newell 500. Let me see if I can grab a drag schematic real quick for... All right, let me look at Mystic. So how many soft washers and how many hard washers do you have? Uh, I believe I have... In the original stack was three soft, uh, three hard, and then it has this weird concave one on the top. Well, that's your tensioning one. Yeah. So I think it's three and three. So you're so you're trying to you're putting a five stack in it. Uh, or trying to. Or I guess it's actually a three stack. Sorry. Three. It's like a three plus one. Well, your plus one is your tensioning. Let me. Uh, I should just. I wish I could just show you the picture. <laughs> Send it to me. I'll look at it right now. One second, I will. Let me uh, let me take it out of this little housing real quick and show you the layout. Yeah, just uh, just send it to me in a second and then call me a few minutes after you send it. All right, cool, we will do. All, All right, right please. please. See ya. All right, 
that just sent you the information for the uh, for the stack. Bra, gracias, appreciate it. It shows it shows it, what it shows is the fire washer in between your uh, your gear and your uh, bridge sleeve. Which one's the bridge sleeve? Is that the first metal washer? The one with the one with the the smaller one with teeth, not the big one with teeth. So it goes in between the big one with teeth and the small one with teeth. Ah, okay. Thank you, sir. I just say I just I just say you the link. You can't go wrong. Yep. Yeah, well, I'll take a look at it. Thank you. Yeah. Peace, man. Yep. Yeah. Well, good thing I called because I was doing it wrong. Let's see what they say. Smooth drag installation. That would have probably been smart. Yeah, you should probably uh, should probably pull this up. I'll put a link to this in the description. Uh, good thing we called the coach because we were about to do this thing wrong. What we need to do is use this small washer to go right over this this member right here. So it's like that. Then you put on your big wheel like this. Let it slide in there. Cool. So then, then it's the stack. So we're going this way. Fiber washer down first. Metal washer, carbon fiber washer, dog-eared wash washer. You'll see these little nubs on the end that line up. And you have fiber washer, flat washer, and then your tensioning washer goes right there. Looks good. I believe the schematic showed it going upwards. If I did that wrong, let me know. Um, and I'll fix it. From there, we should be set to put everything back together. It shouldn't be too difficult. Um, while it's open, you can see there's a bearing right there. I like to just hit that sucker with a little grease real quick. I'm using Pen Precision Real Oil Grease. You just put a little, a couple dollops right there. Make sure that thing is going smooth, cool. And then it's looking a little bit bare on this main big gear. So I might just uh, use a little pen precision real grease. Dennis recommends not going super crazy on it. So I just, you know, just add a little bit. Just a tad, couple sides. It'll work its way around. Cool. And from there, we can put these washers away. We're not going to use our bearing sleeves. Then we can put the housing back in. All right, one lesson learned and something I probably should have done from the beginning was to pull up the uh, schematic for my reel. And as you can see here, Ulu, Ulu. I can never pronounce that. Alua Junkies, U uh, L U A Junkies.com. I'll put a link down below. Has a, a really high res version. And I'm glad I pulled it up because I was about to put this washer on wrong. And that's the I think the hardest part about this is like which washers go where. <laughs> um, so it's just the stack. You know, when you do this a bunch of times, I don't do it too often to this reel, so um, as I do it more and more. And this, the hard part is always knowing which way to do. I believe, maybe I put this on wrong as well. This concave one, I don't know how much it matters, but I'll put it downwards. I'll keep it like that. I think it just looks a little cleaner that way anyways. So, two mess ups, sorry about that. Put this guy on right here and then put this washer down. Now I can put this housing back on. Slide him in, just like that. And make sure it lines up appropriately. 
to those holes. And then what we can start doing is lightly tighten these holes, make sure they're not catching. Gonna keep doing that, aren't I? All right. So from there, we put on our star drag. And from the picture, there is a nub on one side. I don't know if you can kind of see it. So that goes in towards the reel. One thing, uh, when you're putting on any screw thread, if it doesn't go on the first time that you, uh, you know, you're trying to put it on, so much cat hair, go backwards until it catches, you'll feel the thread kind of drop down and then you should be able to spin it. The worst thing to do is to damage the first couple of threads. Cool, there we go. Now we can put our other washers back on. Here's another tensioning washer. I believe it goes concave facing down. And this washer. And this is why it's nice to have it kind of stacked up. This is where, this one's a little bit tricky because of that um, E-ring. If you're having a lot of trouble, you can probably uh, just take it off and get back to it. But if it came off with the E-ring on, we should be able to put it back on. There we go. Takes a little bit of, a little bit of work. Looks a little dirty, so I'll clean it here, clean it here. Now we put on the handle. Slide it on. This uh, white plastic washer. And we can do this one and just do it loose for now as we then put this guy back on. To here so you kind of just line up you just line up the shaft with this hole slide it on and then kind of push it in a little bit make sure all the holes line up appropriately As you can see, that's not aligned, so you want to align it like that. That's still not aligned. Oh, see, this is where it can get a little tricky. My fishing line, the mono, is stuck in the uh, on the back end of that spool. So you just wanna be careful and make sure that your line is pushed all the way so it's not binding anywhere. Stop binding. Okay. It's better. So, here we go. There you go. Lined up nicely. Now we're gonna put on our case. And I'm sure you don't have to do it this exact way. Um, it might be easier. Well, that seems to work pretty nice. I'm trying it a different way. Usually I don't put up this full, I don't put up this full assembly on before I put the, uh, put the casing back on, but I just kinda wanted to see if it works both ways, and it looks like it does, so you can't really make a mistake there. Push down, and I don't tighten all of them all at once. I kind of just kind of set, start them first. Make sure they're all kind of getting engaged.
It would be helpful to have a screwdriver that's the appropriate size, but you can do it with what you got. I did remember that this, there was always like one screw that was a pain in the butt. Like all these are good except for this one, for whatever reason. That's probably pretty good. Cool. Now, uh, things all back together. We can take this guy, tighten him down, make sure he's on there. Not super tight, just enough. And there we have it. Uh, see, there's still a little bit of play here. So just make sure that that handle is all the way down. I was playing with it and it just didn't feel right. Even when I looked at the schematic, um, this handle wouldn't get tight. Like as you can see right now, it's sturdy. Um, that set, second to last washer um, that has a, a concave, a tensioning washer, uh, at first I had it pointed down, but now I have it kind of like a bowl. And when I put it with the, the concave facing uh, up, I guess you would say, it just I guess imagine a bowl, uh, it made it so that it's nice. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with me as I tried really noobishly to change the drags on my old school Newell reel. Two lessons learned, have your schematics for your drag setup as well as the schematics for the reel that you're going to be fixing up. Uh, I will put links down below to all the helpful resources including Dennis's YouTube channel which you can follow along with him as well as the PDFs for the schematics and big thanks to coach for helping me out pointing me in the right direction If you want to see more content like this hit that like button subscribe for more Let me know in the comments down below. What is your favorite vintage reel and until next time check out this video and maybe even this video I'll see you on the next one